The last thing I wanted to do on my summer break was blow up another school. But there I was Monday morning, first week of June, sitting in my mom's car in front of Good High School on East 81st. Good was this big brownstone building overlooking the East River. A bunch of BMWs and Lincoln Town Cars were parked out front. Staring up at the fancy stone archway, I wondered how long it would take me to get kicked out of this place. Just relax. My mom didn't sound relaxed. It's only an orientation tour. And remember, dear, this is Paul's school, so try not to, you know, destroy it. Yeah. Paul Blofus, my mom's boyfriend, was standing out front, greeting future ninth graders as they came up the steps. With his salt and pepper hair, denim clothes, and a leather jacket, he reminded me of a TV actor, but he was just an English teacher. He had managed to convince good high school to accept me for ninth grade, despite the fact I had gotten kicked out of every school I'd ever attended. I tried to warn him it wasn't a good idea, but he wouldn't listen. I looked at my mom. You haven't told him the truth about me, have you? She tapped her knit fingers nervously on the wheel. She was dressed up for a job interview, her best blue dress and high-heeled shoes. I thought we should wait, she admitted. So we don't scare him away? I'm sure orientation will be fine, Percy. It's only one morning. Great, I mumbled. I can get expelled before I even start the school year. Think positive. Tomorrow you're off to camp. After orientation, you've got your date. It's not a date, I protested. It's just Annabeth, Mom. Jeez. She's coming all the way from camp to meet you. Well, yeah. You're going to the movies. Yeah. Just the two of you. Mom! She held up her hands in surrender, but I could tell she was trying hard not to smile. You better get inside, dear. I'll see you sit tonight. I was about to get out of the car when I looked over at the steps of the school. Paul Blofus was greeting a girl with frizzy red hair. She wore a maroon t-shirt and ratty jeans decorated with marker drawings. When she turned, I caught a glimpse of her face and the hairs on my arm stood straight up. Percy? My mom asked. What's wrong? N -n nothing I stammered. Does the school have a side entrance? Down the block on the right? Why? I'll see you later. My mom started to say something, but I got out of the car and ran, hoping the redheaded girl wouldn't see me. What was she doing here? Not even my luck could be this bad. Yeah, right. I was about to find out my luck could get a whole lot worse. Sneaky orientation didn't work out too well. Two cheerleaders in purple and white uniforms were standing at the side entrance, waiting to ambush freshmen. Hi! They smiled, which I figured was the first and last time any cheerleader would be that friendly to me. One was blonde with icy blue eyes. The other was African American with dark curly hair like Medusa's. And believe me, I know what I'm talking about. Both girls had their names stitched in cursive on their uniforms, but with my dyslexia, the words looked like meaningless spaghetti. Welcome to good, the blonde girl said. You are so going to love it. But as she looked me up and down, her expression said something more like, Ew, who is this loser? The other girl stepped uncomfortably close to me. I studied the stitching on her uniform and made out Kelly. She smelled like roses and something else I'd recognized from riding lessons at camp. The scent of freshly washed horses. It was a weird smell for a cheerleader. Maybe she owned a horse or something. Anyway, she stood so close, I got the feeling she was going to try to push me down the steps. What's your name, Fish? Fish? Freshman! Uh, Percy. The girls exchanged looks. Oh, Percy Jackson! The blonde one said. We've been waiting for you! That sent a major, uh-oh, chill down my back. They were blocking the entrance, smiling in a not very friendly way. My hand crept instinctively toward my pocket where I kept my lethal ballpoint pen riptide. Then another voice came from inside the building. Percy? It was Paul Blofus, somewhere down the hallway. I'd never been so glad to hear his voice. The cheerleaders backed off. I was so anxious to get past them I accidentally kneed Kelly in the thigh. Her leg made a hollow metallic sound, like I just hit a flagpole. Ow! She muttered. Watch it, fish! I glanced down, but her leg looked like a regular old leg. I was too freaked out to ask questions. I dashed in down to the hall, the cheerleaders laughing behind me. There you are! Paul told me. Welcome to good! Hey, Paul, uh, Mr. Blofus. I glanced back, but the weird cheerleaders had disappeared. 
Percy, you look like you've seen a ghost. Yeah, uh, Paul clapped me on the back. <laughs> Listen, I know you're nervous, but don't worry. We got a lot of kids here with ADHD and dyslexia. Teachers know how to help. I almost wanted to laugh. If only ADHD and dyslexia were my biggest worries. I mean, I knew Paul was trying to help, but if I told him the truth about me, he'd either think I was crazy or he'd run away screaming. Those cheerleaders, for instance, I had a bad feeling about them. Then I looked down the hall and I remembered I had another problem. The red-headed girl I'd seen on the front steps was cut just coming in the main entrance. Don't notice me, I prayed. She noticed me. Her eyes widened. Where's the orientation? I asked Paul. The gym, that way, but bye. Percy, he called, but I was already running. I thought I had lost her. A bunch of kids were heading for the gym, and soon I was just one of 314 year olds all crammed into the bleachers. A marching band played out a tune fight song that sounded like somebody hitting a bag of cats with a metal baseball bat. Older kids, probably student council members, stood up front modeling the good school uniform and looking all, hey, we're cool. Teachers milled around, smiling and shaking hands with students. The walls of the gym were plastered with big purple and white banners that said, welcome feature freshmen. Good is good, we're all family, and a bunch of other happy slogans that pretty much made me want to throw up. None of the other freshmen looked thrilled to be here either. I mean, coming to an orientation in June, when school wasn't even supposed to start until September, is not cool. But, at good, we prepare to excel early. At least that's what the brochure said. The marching band stopped playing. A guy in a pinstripe suit came to the microphone and started talking, but the sound echoed around the gym, so I had no idea what he was saying. He might have been gargling. Someone grabbed my shoulder. What are you doing here? It was her, my redheaded nightmare. Rachel Elizabeth Dare, I said. Her jaw dropped like she couldn't believe I had the nerve to remember her name. And you're Percy somebody. I didn't get your full last name last December when you tried to kill me. Look, I wasn't, I didn't, what are you doing here? Same as you, I guess. Orientation. You live in New York? What? You thought I lived at Hoover Dam? It never occurred to me. Whenever I thought about her, and I'm not saying I thought about her, she just crossed my mind from time to time, okay? I always figured she lived in the Hoover Dam area since that's where I'd met her. We'd spent maybe 10 minutes together, during which time I'd accidentally swung a sword at her, she saved my life, and I'd run away chased by a band of supernatural killing machines. You know, your typical chance meeting. Some guy behind us whispered, Hey, shut up! Cheerleaders are talking! Hi guys! A girl bubbled into the microphone. It was the blonde I had seen at the entrance. My name's Tammy and this is like Kelly! Kelly did a cartwheel. Next to me, Rachel yelped like someone had struck her with a pin. A few kids looked over and snickered, but Rachel just stared at the cheerleaders in horror. Tammy didn't seem to notice the outburst. She started talking about all the great ways we could get involved during our freshman year. Run! Rachel told me. Now! Why? Rachel didn't explain. She pushed her way to the edge of the bleachers, ignoring the frowning teachers and grumbling kids as she was stepping on. I hesitated. Tammy was explaining how we were about to break into small groups and tour the school. Kelly caught my eye and gave me an amused smile like she was waiting to see what I'd do. It would look bad if I left right now. Paul Blofitz was down there with the rest of the teachers. He'd wonder what was wrong. Then I thought about Rachel Elizabeth Dare and the special ability she had shown last winter at Hoover Dam. She'd been able to see a group of security guards who weren't guards at all, who weren't even human. My heart was pounding. I got up and followed her out of the gym. I found Rachel in the band room. She was hiding behind a bass drum in the percussion section. Get over here, she said. Keep your head down. I felt pretty silly hiding behind a bunch of bongos, but I crouched beside her. Did they follow you? Rachel asked. You mean the cheerleaders? She nodded nervously. I don't think so, I said. What are they? What'd you see? Her green eyes were bright with fear. She had a sprinkle of freckles on her face that reminded me of constellations. Her maroon t-shirt read, Harvard Art Department. You, you wouldn't believe me. Oh yeah, I would, I promised. I know you can see through the mist. The what? The mist, it's, well, it's like this veil that hides the way things really are. Some mortals are born with the ability to see through it, like you. She studied me carefully. You did that at Hoover Dam. You call me immortal, like you're not. I felt like punching a bongo. What was I thinking? I could never explain. She sh I shouldn't even try. 
tell me, she begged. I know what it means, all these horrible things I see. Look, this is gonna sound weird. Do you know anything about Greek myths? Like the Minotaur and the Hydra? Yeah, just try not to say those names when I'm around, okay? And the Furies, she said, warming up. And the Sirens, and okay! I looked around the band hall, sure that Rachel was going to make a bunch of bloodthirsty nasties pop out of the walls, but we were still alone. Down the hallway, I heard a mob of kids coming out of the gymnasium. They were starting the group tours. We didn't have long to talk. All those monsters, I said. All the Greek gods, they're real. I knew it! I would have been more careful if she'd called me a liar, but Rachel looked like she had just confirmed her worst suspicion. You don't know how hard it's been, she said. For years, I thought I was going crazy. I couldn't tell anybody. I couldn't... Her eyes narrowed. Wait, who are you? I mean, really? I'm not a monster. Well, I know that. I could see if you were. You look like you, but you're not human, are you? I swallowed. Even though I had had three years to get used to who I was, I never talked about it with a regular mortal before. I mean, except for my mom, but she already knew. I don't know why, but I took the plunge. I'm a half-blood, I said. I'm half-human. And half-what? Just then, Tammy and Kelly stepped into the band room. The door slammed shut behind them. There you are, Percy Jackson, Tammy said. It's time for your orientation. They're horrible, Rachel gasped. Tammy and Kelly were still wearing their purple and white cheerleader costumes, holding pom-poms from the rally. What do they really look like? I asked, but Rachel T seemed too stunned to answer. Oh, forget her! Tammy gave me a brilliant smile and started walking toward us. Kelly stayed by the doors, blocking our exit. They had trapped us. I knew we'd have to fight our way out, but Tammy's smile was so dazzling it distracted me. Her blue eyes were beautiful, and the way her hair swept over her shoulders... Percy! Rachel warned. I said something really intelligent like, Uh? Tammy was getting closer. She held out her pom-poms. Percy! Rachel's voice seemed to be coming from a long way away. Snap out of it! It took all my willpower, but I got my pen out of my pocket and uncapped it. Riptide grew into a three-foot-long bronze sword. Its blades glowed with a faint golden light. Tammy's smile turned to a sneer. Oh, come on! She protested. You don't need that. How about a kiss instead? She smelled like roses and clean animal fur. A weird but somehow intoxicating smell. Rachel pinched my arm hard. Percy! She wants to bite you! Look at her! She's just jealous! Tammy looked back at Kelly. May I, mistress? Kelly was still blocking the door, licking her lips hungrily. Go ahead, Tammy. You're doing fine. Tammy took another step forward, but I leveled my tip of my sword to her chest. Get back! She snarled. Freshman, she said with disgust. This is our school, Half-Blood. We feed on whom we choose. Then she began to change. The color drained out of her face and arms. Her skin turned as white as chalk, her eyes completely red. Her teeth grew into fangs. A vampire, I stammered. Then I noticed her legs. Below the cheerleader skirt, her left leg was brown and shaggy with a donkey's hoof. Her right leg was shaped like a human leg, but it was made of bronze. Uh, a vampire with... Don't mention the legs, Tammy snapped. It's rude to make fun. She advanced on her weird mismatched legs. She looked totally bizarre, especially with the pom-poms, but I couldn't laugh, not facing those red eyes and sharp fangs. A vampire, you say? Kelly laughed. That silly legend was based on us, you fool. We are Imposi, servants of Hecate. Hmm. Tammy edged closer to me. Dark magic formed us from animal bronzing ghost. We exist to feed on the blood of young men. Now come, give me that kiss. She bared her fangs. I was so paralyzed I couldn't move but Rachel threw a snare drum at the Impusa's head. The demon hissed and batted the drum away. It went rolling along the aisles between music stands, its springs rattling against the drum head. Rachel threw a xylophone, but the demon just swatted it away too. I don't usually kill girls, Tammy growled. 
But for you, mortal, I'll make an exception. Your eyesight is a little too good. She lunged at Rachel. No! I slashed with Riptide. Tammy tried to dodge my blade, but I sliced straight through her cheerleader uniform, and with a horrible wail, she exploded into dust all over Rachel. Rachel coughed. She looked like she just had a sack of flour dumped on her head. Monsters do that, I said. Sorry. You killed my trainee, Kelly yelled. You need a lesson in school spirit, Half-Blood. Then she too began to change. Her wiry hair turned to flickering flames. Her eyes turned red. She grew fangs. She loped toward us, her brass foot and hoof clopping unevenly on the bandroom floor. I am Senior Mpusa, she growled. No hero has bested me in a thousand years. Yeah, I said. Then you're overdue. Kelly was a lot faster than Tammy. She dodged my first strike and rolled into the brass section, knocking over a row of trombones with a mighty crash. Rachel scrambled out of the way. I put myself between her and the Mpusa. Kelly circled us, her eyes going from me to the sword. Such a pretty little blade, she said. What a shame it stands between us. Her form shimmered, sometimes a demon, sometimes a pretty cheerleader. I tried to keep my mind focused, but it was really distracting. Poor dear, Kelly chuckled. You don't even know what's happening, do you? Soon your pretty little camp in flames, your friends made slaves to the Lord of Time, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. It would be merciful to end your life now before you have to see that. From down the hall I heard voices. A tour group was approaching. A man was saying something about locker combinations. The Impusa's eyes lit up. Excellent! We're about to have company! She picked up a tuba and threw it at me. Rachel and I ducked. The tuba sailed over our heads and crashed through the window. The voices in the hall died down. Percy! Kelly shouted, pretending to be scared. Why did you throw that? I was too surprised to answer. Kelly picked up a music stand and swiped a row of clarinets and flutes. Chairs and musical instruments crashed to the floor. Stop it! I said. People were tromping down the hall now, coming in our direction. Time to greet our visitors! Kelly bared her fangs and ran for the doors. I charged after her with Riptide. I had to stop her from hurting the mortals. Percy, don't! Rachel shouted, but I hadn't realized what Kelly was up to until it was too late. Kelly flung open the doors. Paul Blofus and a bunch of freshmen stepped back in shock. I raised my sword. At the last second, the Impusa turned toward me like a cowering victim. Oh no, please! She cried. I couldn't stop my blade. It was already in motion. Just before the celestial bronze hit her, Kelly exploded into flames like a Molotov cocktail. Waves of fire splashed over everything. I'd never even seen a monster do that before, but I didn't have time to wonder about it. I backed into the band room as flames engulfed the doorway. Percy! Paul Blofus looked completely stunned, staring at me from across the fire. What have you done? Kids screamed and ran down the hall. The fire alarm wailed, ceiling sprinklers hissed to life. In the chaos, Rachel tugged on my sleeve. You gotta get out of here! She was right. The school was in flames and I'd be held responsible. Mortals couldn't see through the mist properly. To them, it would look like I had just acted a helpless cheerleader in front of a group of witnesses. There was no way I could explain it. I turned from Paul and sprinted for the broken band room window. I burst out of the alley onto East 81st and ran straight into Annabeth. Hey, you're out early! She laughed, grabbing my shoulders to keep me from tumbling into the street. Watch where you're going, seaweed brain! For a split second, she was in a good mood, and everything was fine. She was wearing jeans and an orange camp t-shirt and her clay bead necklace. Her blonde hair was pulled back in a ponytail. Her gray eyes sparkled. She looked like ready she was ready to catch a movie, have a cool afternoon hanging out together. Then Rachel Elizabeth Dare, still covered in monster dust, came charging out of the alley, yelling, Percy, wait up! Annabeth smiled and melted. She stared at Rachel, then at the school. For the first time, she seemed to notice the black smoke and the ring and fire alarms. She frowned at me. What'd you do this time? And who's this? Oh, Rachel, Annabeth. Annabeth, Rachel. Um, she's a friend, I guess. I wasn't sure what to call Rachel. I mean, I barely knew her, but after being in two life or death situations together, I couldn't just call her a nobody. Hi, Rachel said. Then she turned to me. You're in so much trouble. 
And you still owe me an explanation! Police sirens wailed on FDR Drive. Percy? Annabeth said coldly. We should go! I want to know more about Half-Bloods! Rachel insisted. And monsters and this stuff about the gods! She grabbed my arm, whipped out a permanent marker, and wrote a phone number on my hand. You're gonna come in and explain, okay? You owe me that, now get going! But I'll make up some story, Rachel said. I'll tell them it wasn't your fault. Just go! She ran back toward the school, leaving Annabeth and me in the street. Annabeth stared at me for a second, then she turned and took off. Hey! I jogged after her. There were these two Impusai, I tried to explain. They were cheerleaders, see, and they said camp was going to burn, and you told a Mulder girl about half-bloods? She can see through the mist. She saw the monster before I did. So you told her the truth. She recognized me from Hoover Dam, so you've met her before? Um, last winter, but seriously, I barely know her. She's kind of cute. I, I never thought about it. Annabeth kept walking toward York Avenue. I'll deal with the school, I promised, anxious to change the subject. Honest, it'll be fine. Annabeth wasn't even looking at me. I guess her afternoon is off. We should get you out of here, now that the police will be searching for you. Behind us, smoke billowed up from Good High School. In the dark column of ashes, I thought I could almost see a face. A she-demon with red eyes laughing at me. Your pretty little camp in flames, Kelly had said. Your friends made slave to the Lord of Time. You're right, I told Annabeth, my heart sinking. We have to get to Camp Half-Blood. Now!